I'm Deck Downey. Uh, I started life as a material scientist, but became an engineer by practice. And I've been involved with sewer rehabilitation projects in India since the 1990s. I began working in Mumbai with the installation of the first cured in place, place pipe in India in 1994. Um, and I became involved in Calcutta with Mr. Basu, the chief engineer, um, around, around 2008. This project in Calcutta is truly remarkable. These large diameter brick sewers were constructed in the 1860s, which was actually about the time that Joseph Bazalgette in London was working to solve the issue of the Great Stink. And by 1875, the Calcutta sewer system, uh, masterminded by William Clark, included about 60 kilometres of large diameter brick sewer. So actually they were well ahead of Bazalgette in London. These sewers were amongst the largest in the world. The biggest ones were, I think, 2.7 uh, metres by uh, 2.3 metres in, in, in cross-section, uh, egg shapes, and they show all the, size, all the usual signs of uh, deterioration that we would get. Uh, hydrogen sulphide acid attack, which corrodes the mortar between the bricks, and erosion takes place, and so the bricks fall into the invert of the sewer. We get groundwater infiltration, um, and we get uh, um, ser serious problems for anybody working in there because of the hydrogen sulphide. And today, the mega city of Calcutta occupies an area of probably 200 square kilometers and is home to 5.2 million people. In fact, the greater Calcutta area is home to 15 million. It's India's third largest conurbation and is growing. This puts a massive stress on the sewerage system and prompts a, a huge investment from the city of Calcutta, the government of West Bengal and the government of India. The challenges for the city engineers include, include the management of the massive flows of sewage running through these sewers, uh, the removal and disposal of the silt, for want of a better word, and the bricks and all the detritus in the sewer, um, and, and that involved actually moving 50,000 cubic metres of waste material from, from the pipes, enough to cover the cricket ground to a depth of about eight metres. Calcutta, in addition, is, is subject to a monsoon season which runs from April through to October, um, and 90% of the rainfall occurs in those months, so those are very difficult months to work underground. Additional problems, Calcutta city is densely trafficked, hugely overpopulated. The roads are busy for at least 20 hours a day. Open cut replacement is simply not on. Um, you have to use a trenchless technology. Uh, it's the only possible solution. The problem there is that very few contractors have the experience necessary to undertake these very large diameter projects, and very few of them have any experience of working in India, so it's a double-edged problem. The project is ongoing, so uh, there's probably 30 to 35 kilometers of sewer work constructed so far. So what the project delivered was a new corrosion resistant sewer which should be good for another 60 or 70 years. Um, it will maintain the flows, in fact it will probably give extra capacity because the smooth surface will have better flow characteristics. And it will be less expensive to maintain in the coming years. The method of installation that was employed, the slip lining process, enables the traffic to move around the construction work um, except during the, the nighttime period of working. And so the disruption to the local population and to the commerce in the area was very limited indeed. Also, the technology transfer that uh, took place enables Calcutta Municipal Corporation to tackle further projects in the remaining 130 kilometers of brick sewer that they have, and gives them confidence in other trenchless technologies to maintain the smaller diameter feeder pipes in the whole system. So the project has really given them a lead over other cities in India uh, and, and they can now uh, help steer the whole national development of rehabilitation programs for sewer construction. The whole of the sewer rehabilitation industry is totally dependent on civil engineers 
at various levels of expertise. Although it seems very basic, it is real-life problem-solving. In recent years, <coughs> the engineering profession has enjoyed improved recognition. I've enjoyed a certain amount of recognition. I got a, a, a prize from the Japan Microtunneling Association. I got a lifetime award from the UK industry, and most recently, the ISTT's gold medal. However, I think for most of us, the sense that what we're doing is purposeful and worthwhile, that's a real bonus. Engineering is problem solving, uh, with the potential to bring real job satisfaction. The skills are universal, very transferable, so you can really take it wherever there is opportunity, and the opportunities are endless and ever-changing.